Hey guys, how's it going? It's Tom Ryan and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I got something really cool to show you and that is the high definition rendering pipeline that Unity released as a preview version. I'm gonna walk you through a project that I created by using that high definition rendering pipeline. And in the next videos, I'm gonna show you the lightweight pipeline as well. So today let's look at a project that I created. I'll show you the scene that I have and then also some of the different materials that I created with this amazing rendering pipeline. All right, guys, so this is a scene that I created by using the template that Unity provides. And if you're curious to find out how I did that, I went to File, New Project, and I selected the High Definition RP Preview. Then I click on Create. Then what I did after that is basically deleted all the assets that they provided except for the main camera, the directional light, the post-processing volume, and the volume setting. And the reason why I did that is because I only wanted to bring in what was part of the high definition pipeline. I didn't want to use Unity assets, but you're welcome to do that if you want to try and see how things look and how things work. So I created a very, a very basic model that allows me to you know, find out how the materials look like when I apply to them. So I did that with Maya and then imported them into Unity. So you can click on models and you can see that I have a sphere that is very basic. All it is is just, you know, if I click on the sphere, drag it and drop it, it's basically that sphere that you're seeing on all the other models. So the, the way that the rendering pipeline works is that you have a lot of different settings and functionality to you. So let me delete this sphere and I'll walk you through some of those. So if you notice, the scene has, you know, has kind of like a fog style and also a skybox that make it look like, you know, there's a sun actually hitting some of the materials. I also have my camera here and I also have my post processing effects. So everything looks very crisp and very beautiful. And a lot of that has to do with the settings that the Unity high definition rendering pipeline has. So let me go over some of those settings. So the first thing that I want to look at is the volume setting. So the volume setting is a component that you can add as part of it. So I could simply click on add component and then type in volume and you can see that you can now add a volume. The just much like the post processing effects, you can add a scriptable object that is associated with it. And basically, if I click on that, that has all the different information, all the settings that you have applied to your scene. So that already was done by the template that I'm using, but you're more than welcome to change some of them. And in fact, we're gonna change some of them as we look at this scene. So if I look at the, the first setting, it's gonna be global. That's whether I want to apply globally or not. Also, if I wanna change the weight, maybe I have multiple volumes and I want more weight on one versus another one, you can change that as well. You can also change the priority, just just basically the same thing as the way it says volume priority is a stack higher numbers means higher priority negative numbers values are supported as well so i haven't used any of those i normally just have one volume but you're welcome to try some of those and then definitely the profile so that was already created in the scene but if you want to create a new profile you can simply create new or you can simply clone the profile and then associate it with a new volume setting game object so the other thing that I have in here is I have access to shadows. So in this scene, I don't have anything that is reflecting shadows except for, you know, this shadow right here. But let me add a cube in so that we can look and see how shadows look like. So what I'm going to do is just add a cube and then put it right beneath everything. And you can see how some of those settings are going to affect the, the shadows. Okay, and it looks like we have some shadows in there. You can kind of see that the shadows look beautiful. And let's go back into volume settings and I'm going to change the distance so you can change, you know, whether I want this to be, you know, a lower number. You can see it kind of starts to fade. So if I start incrementing it, it starts changing the value and how the shadows actually look like. So I'm going to undo what I did and then just leave it at 700. So the other thing that I can do is I can change also the cascade count. So if I just wanted to do you know, one split, I could set it to two. If I wanted to do a split count of three, then I could increment it all the way to four. And you can tweak some of these ones and that will change the way that the, the shadows 
look like. I'm gonna leave it as I had it by default. So let me undo and let's go back into volume settings. So the other thing that is really cool about these post-processing, uh, actually high definition render pipeline is that you can generate procedural skies. So on this one, I could say, okay, I don't want a procedural sky and that's gonna change the look of the scene. Or I could say, okay, I do want a procedural sky, which is then gonna use the procedural sky settings that I have here. And also those ones are coming from the volume settings. So let's go back to volume settings. Perfect. And if I change the sun, so I can I could change the sun size and you can see how that is affecting the scene. I can also change this other setting as well and you can see that how that is affecting my material, specifically this one right here by changing this one. So the other one that I wanna show you is the atmosphere thickness. So if I change it, see how everything is changing, atmosphere is changing quite a bit. And if I go back down, that's also changing. So I'm gonna undo and just leave it as we had it. And perfect. So the other thing that I can change is the sky tint. And I, I went back and forth and make a lot of changes to this until I was happy with some of these settings. Can definitely just play around with some of this. And I'm gonna undo. And also the ground color. If I wanted to change you know, the ground color, you can see how that is procedurally changing the ground. Again, I'm gonna undo that. And also the exposure. If I wanted to do you know, something very bright, then I can change the exposure. I can also change the multiplier. If I wanted to do, you know, do that as well. And then you also have an update mode, which I haven't used. And it says specify how the environment lighting should be updated. So if you wanna change it real time, or if you wanna change it on demand, or if you wanna do it on change, you can do that as well. Then the other thing that is really cool that this provides is the exponential fog. So if you look towards the distance, you can see that there's also fog getting generated. You can also see, you know, in this area, there's quite a bit of fog. And if I change the density, you can see that the fog is going away and then the fog is coming in as I change the density. Then also the fog distance, I can modify how that gets updated or how that looks like. So you can see that that is affecting. So if I want to have the scene very foggy, then I can have that number be very low. I'm just gonna undo and leave it at 200. I can also change the fog base height, the, fo the fog height attenuation. And some of these settings I, I really haven't messed around with. I specifically play around with density, fog distance, and then some of these other two. So, but you're welcome to, to change some of those as well. And again, if you don't wanna include fog, you can simply just set this to none, or you can enable the linear fog again if you wanted to, or you can do a exponential fog. So I'm gonna leave it at linear fog. I think that looks really well. So those are some of the settings that I have in the volume, in the volume settings. There's also a baking sky, and these got generated automatically by the template. But the way that it works is that it, create, it creates a volume setting underscore baking. So I needed to create another scene as well that had that in it. And what I did is I created a volume setting dark and also a volume setting dark underscore baking just to kind of follow that same structure. So let's go back into volume setting. So that's everything that I, that I experiment with in the, you know, in the volume component. There's also other components that you can add to this volume. You can do contact shadows, gradient sky, HDRI sky, and then some additional ones that I'll be covering in some of the next videos. For now, let's just focus on procedural sky and exponential, and exponential fog. And now what I wanna show you, so I'm gonna, delete the, I'm gonna delete the cube. I don't need to see the shadows. We know that those ones are working fine. So I want to focus on the materials next. So let's click on materials and if you notice the materials really look beautiful in this and the reason why they look so beautiful is because this is a different shader this is all part of the hdrp shaders so if i click on that you can see that hdrp has its own area you can you can do an axf which i haven't used you can also do decal layer list and then some of these other ones that i have an experiment with experiment with the one that i'm that i want to cover is the lid so let's focus on that piece and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the black one and we can see 
the metal black game object and we can see what that is doing for us and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom in and these are all the different settings that you have available through basically through the HDRP material you have sur surface options you can determine whether you want this opaque or you want this transparent you can determine whether you want this double-sided or not double-sided if you want alpha clipping there's also different material types so if you want you know SSS which is surface scattering subsurface scattering that it's used you know for skin you can do that as well there's also other types translucent specular specular color and then I can't say some of those words so I'm not gonna even try but you can experiment with some of those experiment with some of those as well then you can also determine if you want to receive decals you can receive SSR and then there are other other actually settings available as well I can also change the display the displacement mode if I wanted to which is vertex displacement and also pixel displacement and the for this material the only thing that I enabled was so it's a, basically it's an opaque material the material type is a standard and then I just have a basic basic color associated with it you can see that how beautiful that looks without you know making anything anything very complicated all it is is just a very basic material with a color assigned to it then the, the way that I did the metallic you know the metallic look if we go and look at the size is I enable the basically I, I increase the amount of metallic so if I go all the way down you can kind of see that that is changing the material from from looking metallic to non-metallic I also change the smoothness if I didn't want any smoothness, smoothness I could change that if I want to increment it you can see that that it's making it look more like a metallic metallic material in fact if you wanted to see the Sun the procedural Sun reflected on the shape you can basically put 0.86 and you can kind of see how that is changing the material style and then of course you have some other settings in here for normal maps base UV mappings and also emission input so if I wanted to change the emission then I can change that as well and that's changing on most of the materials so you can see that that's changing over there and as I'm pressing as I'm changing things you can kind of see the rendering view is getting reflected refresh and that's because it's getting everything is getting re-rendered I think it's actually trying to get you know bake everything and make it you know make it look beautiful so I'm gonna close this and let's actually close it and then undo so that I'm back to my metal black material the way that I had it so some of the other materials that I have in here is I have this metal gray material which is basically just a clone of the metal black I just changed some of the colors you can kind of see how how amazing that looks I can go back to my metal black I can go to my metal rough and on this one if we go and look at some of the settings I did I added let's see I added the smoothness so on this one it's still opaque I change it to a specular color on the material type and then the smoothness I I did it about half because I like how that look I didn't want it to make it you know as as metallic as I did this one and that looks that looks really cool you can kind of see how the different different style that gives it I can also look at this white one which is very similar to the other ones I just basically play with some of the settings also this one right here has a lot of smoothness and this one is the surface subsurface scattering or also called SSS which kind of makes it look like you know it got, kind of gives you that feeling of having more texture like I can't really explain it but it looks like skin so things can go through it from inside out and yeah I really like how that looks also this metallic one looks really cool so that's basically all that all I wanted to show you on the materials so now let's go to lighting and you can also if I go to post-processing I could actually modify some of the settings and change the lighting but directional lighting works a little bit different on this HDRP I can change the sun side I can change some of the settings for the sun so if I go and increment some of these ones let's see you can kind of see how that is affecting this and I can change the smoothness of the reflections on the sun you can kind of see how beautiful and cool that looks by just making some of, change, some of those changes 
and you can see how some of those materials are just incredible. All right, so I'm just gonna undo what I just did and just put it back to how it was. Perfect. So that's what these settings are. You can just change the highlight on you know what the how the sun is affecting the materials. I can also change the color of the light. So if I want it to be dark or if I want it to be more of a yellow color and more red, then I can change that as well. So I'm gonna undo. I can also change the intensity if I want it to be you know dark versus more you know lighter. I can change that. The indirect multiplier can be modified. And I think that's all I wanted to show you here. You can also modify some of the shadow settings, but I'm not gonna cover that right now. Then the last thing that I want to show you is post-processing. So let's go ahead and look at the you know the game view and look at color grading. So for this one I'm using the ACES because I really like how that looks. If I turn it off, you kind of see that that is ruining the entire scene. So I have some, you know, I'm overriding the, the exposed value just to make it a little, you know, a little darker. You can change some of these settings. And I have a video where I go through post-processing effects, so you're more than welcome to look at that. I'll, I'll link that in the description of this video. So that's what I'm using here. I'm using color grading. I'm using Bloom, Vignetti, Ambient Occlusion, just for the insights. Basically, that's the insights part. That's the Ambient Occlusion you know, get, getting affected in those areas. I'm also using the motion blur, depth of field, and auto exposure. So that's basically that piece. And the other thing that I wanna show you is the other scenes that I have here. So this one is the materials, I'm gonna say don't save. The other one is materials deform. And this one doesn't look good to start with. And it's because the, the shader is the one that is doing the deformation on these materials. So if I hit, if I hit play, and you'll see how the deformation gets applied. And I wanted to see how deformation was gonna look like in HDRP, and you can see that that's actually looking really cool. So that's basically the scene. I have shaders for that, and which is basically the shader called Deform, which I credit with I credit it with Shader Graph. And the last scene that I want to show you that I also that I really really like also uses the Deform shader. If I hit play, so what I did on this one is I have a sphere, and inside of it I have the deformation material, and I wanted to experiment to see how the, the basically the edges, how that lighting lighting gets applied through the deformation, and it looks just just as astounding, like it looks really really beautiful. So if you want to look at how that one is set up, you can look at you know some of the settings here. For this one, I ended up creating a new volume settings. And that's this one that is called volume settings dark and volume settings dark underscore baking. So I make some changes on this one because I wanted this scene to be darker and I didn't want to affect the main scene. So, you know, go ahead and check it out. I'm going to I'm going to push this to GitHub as well. So look for this project in the description of this video and also a link to the post processing video so that you can see how post processing works. So that's everything I wanted to show you in this video, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And just keep, keep in mind that I'm still learning um, how to use the rendering, this high definition rendering pipeline. So I'll be adding more videos as I get more detail on how everything works. But if you have any questions, let me know. And don't forget to share and subscribe to the channel.